Region IDs are one of the most powerful tools you can use in RPG Maker. Their potential is limitless, but here's one small example. We want the player to respawn at the beginning of this path if they walk off the glass bridge. Instead of using an event around every bridge tile, use the region editor to make every tile around the bridge region 1. Make a parallel event that stores the player's x and y into an x variable and a y variable. Then use get location info. Change the info type to region ID and select a variable of your choosing that will store the region ID of the tile. Select designation with variables and choose the player's X and Y variables that you created earlier. Finally, a conditional branch that teleports the player to the starting tile if the region ID variable is equal to one. Also, make sure the tiles around the bridge are passable for the character to walk on. Now, when we walk off, we're teleported back to the start. As a new RPG Maker dev, damage formulas can be a bit daunting. Let's look at the damage formula for the attack skill, which is the skill that is used when you select the attack command. In the first part of the formula, we see a.atk times 4. A represents the user of the skill. ATK represents the user's attack stat, including increases from their gear, states, and so on. If you hover over the formula with your mouse, you can see the tooltip that shows the other abbreviations you can use for other stats. In the second part of the formula, we see B.DEF times 2. B is the target of the skill. So if you select an enemy slime, B.DEF will be the slime's defense stat. The roles are reversed if the slime is the one using the attack command. In that case, the letter A would represent the slime and the letter B would represent the player. There's plenty more to talk about with damage formulas, so stay tuned. Continuing our discussion on damage formulas, let's talk about variance. Variance is the amount that your damage formula can either increase or decrease by after the formula is calculated. Let's say, for example, that your formula comes out to be 100 damage and you have a variance of 20%. Keeping 100 as our example, a 20% decrease would be 80, and a 20% increase would be 120. This means that RNG will pick any number between 80 and 120. It could do 93 damage, or it could do 112 damage. Variance is there to provide a bit of randomness to your damage formulas to keep things from getting stale. However, this isn't always necessary to use, if at all, depending on the type of combat you're trying to achieve. Today's damage formula tip is brought to you by my algebra teacher from like middle school. Damage formulas follow the order of operations, which I was taught to remember by the acronym PEMDAS, which I'll put on the screen. This is the order in which things will get calculated in your damage formulas. Let's say for this formula, we have 50 plus our user's attack times two. For sake of example, let's say our user's attack is 10. If you don't know the order of operations, you might think it will add 50 plus 10, which is 60, then multiply by two, which is 120. However, due to the order of operations, 10 times two will get multiplied first. That would give us 20 and 50 plus 20 is 70. If you wanted addition or subtraction to be done first, you would add parentheses around that section of the formula as parentheses always get calculated before anything else. An unrealistically wide scope for your RPG Maker project can kill it before you even really get started. You find a plugin for a quest log, and now you want skill levels in the game, relationship mechanics, farming sim mechanics, a day-night cycle, and the list goes on. Next thing you know, you've got 30 plugins, and there's so much to do that it's overwhelming, and you give up on the project before you've made any real progress. I've fallen into this trap many times, along with countless other RPG Maker devs. I think it's important to stop and ask, is this mechanic or plugin a core part of this project? Is it an absolutely vital system for my game? Is the player going to get real value and enjoyment out of this? If the answer to these questions is no, it might be worth taking a look at your project's overall scope and scaling things back a bit. You might find that it's not only easier to work on, but more enjoyable and easier to stick with. I've talked about this before, but only in a brief moment. So let's make some randomized loot from our treasure chest. 
As a quick note, there are much easier ways to do this through scripting or plugins, but this is for those that don't want to do that. Create a common event. Call it random loot. Create a variable and call it RNG. Set RNG to a random number depending on the amount of items you want to drop. For this example, we have a potion, return stone, and Thundara scroll, so we'll set the random number from 1 to 3. Then we'll create a conditional branch for each option. If RNG equals 1, it'll drop a potion, 2 for return stone, and 3 for Thundara scroll. Make sure your chest event calls the common event. Now when we open the chest, we'll get random loot. In this example, every item has an equal chance of dropping. You can change the weighting of the items where one will drop more often than the other through this method, but that's something we'll discuss in another video. In the last video about random loot, we're going to be changing the chances each piece of loot can drop. There's a slightly different version of this using nested else branches, but this method seems best in my opinion for beginners to understand. Previously, we had the RNG variable choose a number from 1 to 3, which gave everything an equal chance of dropping. Now we're going to make potions drop 50% of the time, return stones 30%, and Thundara scrolls 20%. Change RNG to choose a random number from 1 to 100. I choose to use 100 because it's very easy to track percentages that way, but you can use whatever you want. Now for our potion drop, we want to change our conditional branch to if RNG is less than or equal to 50. We want to change return stone to greater than 50 and a nested conditional branch for less than or equal to 80 and Thundara scroll to greater than 80. To simplify it, 1 to 50 equals a 50% chance, 51 to 80 is a 30% chance, and 81 to 100 is a 20% chance. Now you have weighted loot. In RPG Maker, the collapse effect is what happens when you defeat an enemy. You can set this for each enemy under their traits. It's set to normal by default. There are four collapse effects in total. The normal collapse effect causes the enemy to just kind of change its hue a bit and then fade out. The boss effect is a bit slower and more dramatic, having the enemy kind of disappear into the ground as they're fading. Instant has the enemy, you guessed it, instantly disappear when defeated. And finally, no disappear leaves the enemy graphic on the screen. This could be used for a recurring enemy that doesn't really die, a friendly duel, or some kind of normally inanimate object like a machine or a robot. 